Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at downloading stuff from the internet in Android. And um, as an example, I'm going to download the front page of news.bbc.co.uk. So um, let's take a look at that. So I'll go to news.bbc.co.uk and this could be any website of course very sad news on the front here. I'm going to do view source and um, this is what the actual source of the page looks like. So this is a load of HTML and uh, JavaScript and various other things and the web browser program renders all this text as the actual HTML that you see on the front page. So um, I'm going to now try to download the page in Android and it's going to look um, like this text, we're going to see this text basically and we're going to see later on in future tutorials that you can then use this to download all kinds of other stuff from the internet not just HTML. So uh, let's, um, and you can use it as part of a general mechanism of internet communication so I've created like a really basic uh, Android application just straight out of the box uh, and it says hello world on it which it does by default. The only thing I've changed here is just to type a letter D for the icon and make it green which is not important. And uh, just for the moment for kind of demonstrating the kind of principle here I'm going to go to my main activity and I'm just going to download some stuff in the onCreate method here so that when the application starts it will contact the internet and try to download in this case the front page of BBC News and we're just going to output it for the moment in uh, in like debug in a debug message just so that we can see it working and we'll kind of elaborate on that and make it more useful in um, in the kind of succeeding tutorials so I'm going to give this a method here, private void, let's call it something like download HTML for the moment. And in here I'm going to put the code that downloads the HTML. So now I need to create a URL object and that's capital URL. And I'll just call this URL in lowercase and set that equal to a new URL object. And to the constructor here I supply the URL that I actually want to download. So just for an example, we will say http colon slash slash news.bbc.co.uk and that throws an exception and I think what I'll do is I'll just throw exception from this method. So I'm going to add here in the header throws exception and then any exception that any of these methods throw will just be thrown out of this method because exception is the parent class of all exceptions. And to actually contact the URL I need to say url.openStream and that returns an input stream object. If I hover over it here we can see input stream. So I'm going to say input stream is equals url.openStream and uh, then I need, I'm going to wrap that in an input stream reader. So let's say input stream reader ISR equals new input stream reader and I'll supply the input stream to the constructor of input stream reader and I'll add the input with control shift O. And again this is the kind of Russian doll thing that you'll be familiar with if you've done much um, file handling in Java. But now I'm going to use a buffered reader um, I'm going to say buffered reader br equals equals new buffered reader and pass in my input stream reader there. So I'm getting an input stream, let's add the input there, from url.openStream and I wrap that in an input stream reader to make it more convenient to read and I wrap input stream, stream reader in buffered reader so that I can actually read this line by line which is what I really want. And now I'm going to declare a string which I'll call line and set it equal to null to start with just to just to eliminate any uninitialized variable messages 
and I'm going to say why all and um, let's put in the brackets of why all so it's going to look like this and then in here I'm going to say line equals buffered reader dot read line and I'm going to wrap all that in another pair of brackets because I want to say that I'm going to continue the while loop while line is not equal to null. So this says um, read line from buffered reader and um, set line equal to the return value of read line. And as long as line is not equal to null, then keep looping round. Let's just do control shift F to format that a bit. And now in here, I'm just going to say log.d and I'll pass in my initials for the debug log tag jwp and um, I'm going to just output line here. Now we need to read, we need to run this method somewhere. Let's add, just do control shift o again and add android util log there. I want to run this method and for the moment I'm just going to run it from on create here just to demonstrate this working. And uh, to do that, now if I were to try to run download HTML in here directly, I'd get an, an error that would say something like uh, attempt to access network on the main thread. Uh, you, you don't want to access the internet on the main thread because it would lock up your user interface thread while it was contacting the internet and Android actually prevents you from even doing that. So I need to run this in a background thread. So let's say here new async task, new async task and that takes three template parameters which I'm just going to set all to void for the moment because I don't need to do anything here other than produce some debug output just to demonstrate this working for the moment. And um, I'm going to open a curly parenthesis there and this is the kind of anonymous class syntax and then at the end there I say dot execute and I won't pass it any parameters that's a kind of list of parameters um, which can just be empty and then a semicolon and in here if I just click this error message I can go to add unimplemented methods and I'm going to now implement this doing background method and let's get rid of the uh, override annotation, some blank lines here to make it look a bit ne bit neater. Um, now I, I have to leave that return null in there because if you specify void with capital V for the return type you have to have return null and I had to use void with a capital V because you can't supply a primitive type with a lowercase v as a template parameter type here. And in here I can call my download HTML, let's say download HTML. Now that throws an exception because I said it did uh, and that's because all these things throw exceptions and I didn't want to have to keep handling them. So let's just wrap this in a try catch and again I'm just going to use debug output for the moment and just say log.d jwp my initials there and um, let's just say e dot to string exception dot to string so that we'll get a, a sensible error message hopefully from the exception if one of these methods in here throws an exception out of the method. Now the other things that I need to do are I need to check that my phone can access the internet and I've checked that already and I also if I want this to work I need to add the, the internet permission so I'm going to go to Android Manifesto XML and the permissions tab and click add click uses permission and in, in here for the name I'm going to go down, scroll down and I'm going to select android.permission.internet and I'll save that and finally now I can click run and we're not going to see anything exciting to look at but hopefully we'll get some interesting debug output which we can then in future tutorials use as the basis of um, some kind of really interesting communication um, and uh, more elaborate downloading. So let's go to, um, let's well, actually I'll just wait for this to install. Okay so it's now starting my application and I'll go to DDMS here and um, I've got this my debug output filter set up which filters on my initials JWP which I supplied to log.d. 
So if I now go to that, um, we'll, we can see here, I've got a massive load of output. And that's the stuff that we would see, um, that we see when we do view source on the internet page that I've downloaded. I'll just here um, click on scroll lock, or maybe I'm clicking it off, I'm not sure. But anyway, I, I now if I, once I click that, I can now scroll up and we can go way up here. And uh, it's it's got a load of different lines of just impenetrable gump basically. But the point is that it's successfully downloading that internet page and you can use a similar principle to download anything you want. So that's it for this tutorial and we're going to look at some more interesting stuff in the next tutorial related to communication. So join me again next time and until then, happy coding.